Today I'm going to show you how to create an input list uh, from a stage plot. So you might get handed a stage plot um, by a band or you might get talked through a stage set up over the phone and you might create a plot uh, with a pen and paper or you might get handed one on a napkin during a show. Now in cases of when it's just you, um, running uh, just a stage plot is often enough but when you start working with other people um, you want to be able to document what you're doing on stage. You want to be able to document any changes you make while you're running from band to band. Um, and you want to be able to document a plan so that you can work from, which actually reflects your input list both on your console and on your main stage box. <clears throat> so we're going to do one today just in Excel. I've got this basic stage plot uh, for a band called The Governors. And I'm going to open Excel here. So I'm going to do this from scratch um, and then you can... Um, run it however you want, run templates, save it, modify it, um, do what you need to do in the future. So the first thing we're going to do is create a stage box input number. So this reflects um, the input on, on the main stage. Now I'm just going to hit my caps lock key <clears throat> and I do these all in capitals because what I'm after is something I can see in low light conditions, something that's really easy to read but also punchy. Um, so we're going to have an input number. We're going to have a source. We're going to have a mic. The mic is going to have a stand. The stand is going to be in a position. The channel may carry 48 volts if it's a, a condenser mic or a DI, active DI. Um, and also we're probably going to use drop boxes. Um, or small stage boxes to get to our locations. So I'm just going to stretch those out. <clears throat> now, that's the input side of things. So that, that will be one part of the input list. But I'm also going to do an output list. Now this is a completely separate list that doesn't reflect the input list, but it's just on the same page. So in this case, we're going to have an output. So this is the number of the stage box, the physical output from the stage box. We're going to have a destination for that output. And we're also going to have a type. <clears throat> this is the type of output we're using. If it, um, you'll be likely mixing on a digital console and you can, you can decide, is it a auxiliary or mix? Is it a subgroup um, or is it a matrix? So I wanna be able to reflect that information too. So start with input. Now this is just numeric, so I'm going to use the expand. Just go back a step. I'm going to use the expand numeric tool to get 32 channels, 32 channel console. So now I've got my inputs. Now I'm going to talk about my sources. Now, we always do drums, then bass, then keys and guitar, or guitar and keys, the rest of the instruments, and then vocals, and then at the other end of the desk, we start looking at things like playback. And this is just standard sort of rock and roll practice. So we're gonna do a basic eight channel mic up. So it'll be kick, snare, hat, rack one, rack two. Let's just change that. Floor, overhead left, overhead right, bass line, bass mic. I'm going to do keys first, keys one, doing them in mono, keys two, um, electric guitar. Then we've got uh, percussion and sax. So I'm going to go percussion and sax. I'm going to leave a spare on 16. And then I'm going to go um, vocal one, which is the talk. And I'm going to put another vocal in at downstage center uh, for a guest vocalist. I'm just going to call that vocal two. So I'm going to use a short name for this. So vox two. Down the other end of the desk, I've got a Mac for playback which is in stereo. 
Um, the video operator is sending me some vision lines. So I've got VX left and VX right. These will um, be the output of the video laptop. Um, I want to be able to talk to my band, so I'm going to put a talk to stage on 28, and that can be my basic inputs. So now we can talk about um, what we're going to put on them. Only one kick mic, so I'm going to use an Audix D6. Snare, I'm going to keep it simple, SM57. Hi-hat is going to be an SM81. Uh, E604 for rack, rack and floor. SM81 on overheads. Bass line will be a DI. I'm going to take a feed straight from the bass guitar and then loop it into the amp. Bass mic, nice and simple, SM57. Keys, one and two will be DIs. Electric guitar is going to be a Sennheiser E906. Percussion, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Beta 57 on percussion and a Beta 57 on sax. A bit more high frequency there. Um, vocal one, I'm going to go SM58. Vocal two, I'm going to go Beta 58. And my talk to stage will also be a SM58S, which is switchable. Um, my console only has XLR inputs, so these have to be DI lines, and they're active. So we've got that sorted out. Now we can look at our stands. A short boom on kick, um, a sure drum clamp on snare, a tall boom on hat, the Sennheisers have clips, tall booms on overheads, bass DI doesn't need anything, short boom on the bass mic, nothing on the keys, um, e-guitar I'm going to put on a short boom, although I could hang it from the cabinet, percussion is going to be a tall boom, sax will be a tall boom, vocal will be a tall boom, and I'm going to put a straight or a rock star on the guest vocalist and centre because they won't be playing an instrument. Don't need stands across my um, playback or my um, talk stage. Now position. <coughs> Upstage center is drums. So I'm going to drag that out to channel eight. Bass is on stage left. Uh, keys is on stage right. E-guitar is also on upstage right. Percussion is on stage right. Sax is on stage left. Um, vocal one is on stage right. And then downstage center is my singing vocal. <coughs> Only the hi-hat, the overheads, the DIs, and the playback DIs need phantom power. And I've got a bunch of drop boxes. I've got three of them. So I'm going to run uh, the first one I'm calling A for the drums. These are eight-way drop boxes. The second one, actually, I want to do, I'm going to have the main stage box at stage left. So I'm going to run the bass line straight into it. So in Australia, we call that a home run or direct. Uh, keys will be on Dropbox B1, B2, electric guitar, B3, percussion, B4, sax, I'm going to go direct, and I'll leave the spare line intact on Dropbox B. Vocal 1 will be B6, and vocal 2 I've got one more drop box out front, probably don't need it because I've only got one line, but I'm going to put it in. So I've got um, drop box A, B, and C. <clears throat> now I'm going to look at my outputs. So the, con the stage box has uh, 16 Omni outputs. It can, they can do anything I like. So I'm going to have those ready. Where are they going? No, I want output one to be fallback one. So I'm going to call that fallback one. Fall back two, fall back three, and then drum fill is four. Down the other end, I've got my main PA. So I've got left, <coughs> right, and mono sub feed. So that would be sub. 
So then we've got, what type are they? Well, the foldbacks are running off the same console as front of house, so they need to be pre fade auxes. I want independent control of these levels beyond the master fader. So I'm going to use matrixes. So it's mat one, mat two, mat three, mat one being left, mat two being right, and mat three being sub. I will then sum the left and right to go to the sub. So the sub is a, a mono mix of both left and right. So this is pretty much finished. Um, now I'll just put in my line work. So I do outside to in. So I'll do outside. So thick box there, <coughs> thick box there. <coughs> Box there, <clears throat> and I actually did that backwards. It's actually inside to out. Uh, don't use Excel every day. So do do your inside lines first, and then grab your outside lines. It's better. Uh, when I do these inside lines, those outside lines will disappear. So I just to redo this one. Also, uh, I usually put the um, title line as a different color, just so it stands out a bit. So I'm going to go blue and then red for outputs. And I'm going to make that whole line bold. And that's it. Um, that's a channel list rock and roll. There's enough information there that you could hand that to a technician, uh, print it, save it as a PDF, print it, tape it to the top of the stage box, and there's enough info there that someone should be able to set a stage um, and barely glance at the stage plot. It's, it's all here in the input list.